Hello and welcome to UAT Time within the United Countries special by First Ukraine. You can find us on the frequencies available on our website firstua.com. I'm Sergei Vilichansky. And I am Olivier Vedre. UAT Time is dedicated to bringing Ukraine and Europe closer to each other by introducing the red Ukraine to the rest of the world. Nations fall and rise depending on the energy and resource independency and effective management. Ukraine, though, in spite of the advantages, it has still has a lot of issues to solve. Our guest today is Natalia Katzer-Buchkovska. Natalia is a member of the Ukraine Parliament, head of the Subcommittee on Sustainable Development, Strategy and Investment of Committee on Energy, Nuclear Policy and Security. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome to our show. And the question number one is the blackout. Oh. So many people have talked about this and so many people are influenced. Mm. Now you would be probably the right person to, for us to ask what is happening, what is the perspectives and, and uh, yes, please. Uh, well, as, as you know, that there is an accident and uh, uh, in the line which is transmitting uh, energy into the Crimea. But uh, in case uh, our government now are trying to repair it, and uh, the one only issue is uh, uh, that uh, there is Crimea Tatar who actually uh, trying to show and trying to block these uh, repairments uh, of uh, the line, and uh, because they want to actually focus uh, the attention of the world community uh, to the problem of Crimea, mm -hmm. their, their homeland and uh, their rights. Uh, so there is uh, two uh, sides of the issue. One, one of the technical, mm -hmm. uh, so the technical things are going better and uh, <laughs> the government actually said that uh, this line could be repaired in one today. And the second issue, of course, is the political one uh, when the Crimea Tatar are protesting and they uh, do not allow uh, um, uh, to finish this mm. repairment yeah. work on this line. Uh, so uh, these two things should be solved mm -hmm. and uh, this is the solution for the issue. Mm -hmm. I heard that they uh, do not want to allow the uh, repairment to take place because they want to exchange energy or uh, electricity to Crimea mm. for, the prison, uh, for the political prisoners. Is well, that... there is uh, there are a lot of version of okay. uh, this accident, and first of all, they want to focus the attention of the problem of Crimea Tatar in Crimea yes. itself. Uh, so there is uh, a violation of their rights, uh, and uh, their people are struggling uh, mm -hmm. into this peninsula. Uh, so it's such as uh, maybe not very traditional way. Uh, they they just focus the world attention to their problem and uh, the attention of Ukrainian government to their problem, and they want to actually. Uh, take uh, the, the, the ultimate reason is take Crimea back because mm -hmm. it's Ukrainian territory, yes. it's not the uh, Russian territory. So uh, this is the, the main aim of, of this action. Okay. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, yeah, I, I saw that your also you, your topics are energy mm -hmm. and also environment and also sustainable development. Mm -hmm. And um, I am, you know, I am very focused on on uh, environment mm -hmm. because uh, I come from a country, France, where environment is very important mm -hmm. and the issue uh, of environment is very important and when you when you walk on the street or in the forest uh, everything is uh, in France uh, we take mm -hmm. care about environment mm -hmm. but for example uh, if I walk tomorrow uh, near to the Nyep or in the forest I in Ukraine I saw mm -hmm. a lot of dirty things Mm -hmm. because everybody put some bottle uh, plastic and all that mm -hmm. and how you will deal with that because really you have a very beautiful country and but the education of the people uh, for environment is I think is one of the first issue mm -hmm. for example with your company industry you know mm -hmm. uh, when the industry rejects some bad uh, things in the year yeah. and what what are the, uh, what are they, are they doing where are the norms you know all those mm -hmm. things for me is shocked you know mm -hmm. Environment, uh, of course, is the issue in Ukraine, and the situation is not so good 
Uh, and uh, when I was elected, uh, we first time created the Sustainable Development Committee in the Committee on Energy. Mm -hmm. So actually, it's first time in Ukrainian government, parliament, that we created uh, some sustainable development and focus on sustainability, first of all. And in this regards, I would point out that the issue of waste management is critical. Uh, I, I just cover this topic uh, uh, because uh, uh, almost 7% of our territory is covered by the waste fields. So it's absolutely normal. 7%? 7% of our territory uh, uh, covered by the uh, waste fields and uh, uh, there is no recycling as such. Uh, so I'm not only talking about uh, recycling, but this waste could be used uh, to produce electricity, yeah. to produce heat, and uh, uh, to recycle and to use this material on second time, and uh, as well as uh, actually to produce some gas from the mm -hmm. uh, from this uh, mm -hmm. waste land. And now we implemented one law to support uh, gas methane production from these waste uh, fields. And uh, there is few pro pro projects in Ukraine which are operating and under operation and they are profitable. And, but this is just 10% of the solution. Uh, so now what, should, what needs to be done, of, of course, the very good legislation on waste management because the law is very poor and there is no uh, financial incentive to invest into the waste management. So the law should be changed uh, and uh, we should uh, actually introduce some incentives to, for investors to come and to uh, build up such uh, waste management uh, uh, plans. Uh, because now it's absolutely under the profit line uh, to uh, recycle uh, waste in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's uh, very ridiculous, but we pay uh, 100 times less for waste management as people uh, uh, than in our neighboring countries. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, the, the issue is that there is no incentives for business to invest. Mm -hmm. The second issue, of course, education. But we can educate people only when they have an opportunity, when they have these different uh, business for waste, for different kind of waste, mm -hmm. and we do not have this. Uh, so we should start from the industry reforming, and now there is few initiatives in RADA, uh, a, a few laws which uh, uh, in uh, different ways try to resolve the issue, and it should be pushed, and uh, I suppose next year we'll enact this law. The second thing is, of course, energy efficiency. Ukraine absolutely energy efficient country. So mm -hmm. we spend uh, three times more than uh, average uh, in Europe. Mm -hmm. Why? Because uh, uh, 20 years of our independence, no one care about uh, uh, saving energy. Why? Because uh, uh, this market was monopolized, fully monopolized, and uh, uh, oligarchs who uh, sell and produce gas, they take care about to sell more yes. and uh, to produce more gas. So they do not take care about how to save these uh, this, uh, very expensive mm -hmm. resources. Mm -hmm. And these debts, because people pay just a portion of the price of gas, they lay on... Um, state budget. Mm -hmm. So in such a way, the, our state became uh, very energy efficient and uh, in this regards, uh, uh, new, new elected parliament enacted benching laws on energy efficiency, which allow attract investments and uh, uh, um, actually create energy sa uh, saving companies. And now there is a lot of governmental program, international community programs here in UK to deal with uh, the energy but efficiency. You know, why now you, you are, I say, a an, an new and independent country uh -huh. and uh, I think maybe you have to invest more in uh, uh, new energy and uh, like uh, you know uh, wind energy uh, and all that uh, renewable energy uh -huh. uh, what do you think about those programs because uh, uh -huh. really you have to I think uh, you have to build a lot of new things and uh, uh -huh. you have to do new investment what do you think about the, that the, in the conference where we were yeah. at the yeah. conference, they talk about there that. was an interesting yeah. Uh, point which I'm not qualified to discuss a mm -hmm. lot, but I thought that some, sounds interesting. That if we collect, I mean, we are a very agricultural country. Mm -hmm. uh, Thirty-three percent no. of the best soil in the world is Ukrainian. Mm -hmm. So, uh, the the thought came today is uh, somebody mentioned it, uh, that if we burn one third of straw. After uh, mm -hmm. you know collecting all the all the harvest, 
if we burn off uh, one third of that straw that is left out, left over after that, uh, we can substitute most of the imported gas. Mm -hmm. And I thought, man. That's why I asked this question. Mm -hmm. why, you, you, why, we, why you can, uh, the, the, you, you have to do investments well, in that, you know, come on. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Natalia mentioned a good point yeah. that uh, a major lobbying from the oligarchs mm -hmm. because they, they, they maintain their you know, hands and fingers. And that was the problem of, of, of this morning. Remember, they said yes. that the oligarch also mm -hmm. is, uh, oh, wow. did some lobbying. You're absolutely correct that uh, there is a big opportunity and Ukraine has a great potential in renewables uh, to develop a renewable market and to substitute their very expensive Russian gas and we should do it. And before being elected as a member of parliament, I lead consultancy firm in uh, which uh, actually consult energy efficiency and uh, renewable projects, uh, how to develop. And at the moment, uh, uh, actually, uh, the market was closed. The market was absolutely closed and kept in hand of one oligarch. Whoa. Yes, before, in 2000, before 2014. Uh, so just one person kept this market in his hand and he introduced the local contender Wh environment. Which person? Uh, uh, Kluyev. Kluyev. It was, uh, uh, as you know, we en uh, enacted anti-Kluyev law. Mm -hmm. uh, and it does, uh, in, uh, people said this anti-Kluyev law, <laughs> but it was law to increase competitiveness in the uh, renewable market. And it was first thing we did in Parliament, uh, elaborated this law with, uh, uh, with uh, representatives of small businesses uh, who want to develop renewables in Ukraine and we already passed it and it was a very big step towards uh, attracting investment into this sphere. We also supported, uh, we cut his, his local content requirements so to build up any, uh, for instance, biomass uh, plant here in Ukraine, mm -hmm. you should use local equipment. Mm -hmm. Up to 50% should be local equipment but there is no production in Ukraine. So it was like deadlock. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, now, actually, uh, we just cancelled this norm. And it was big, uh, big uh, progress uh, because we allow technology. We allow uh, uh, we decrease prices on technology in three times. Uh, so now these projects are absolutely profitable and attractive for international investment in Ukraine. Moreover, we introduced feed-in tariff for biomass and biogas. Mm -hmm. So now, uh, biomass and biogas, I, uh, I consider the most. Uh, uh, the most attractive uh, uh, project uh, for international for uh, foreign uh, investment here in Ukraine mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because first of all we have a very good feeding tariff we have a, a big potential big uh, Ukraine is big agricultural country and we actually need of these resources we are lack of these resources so everything in in our hands okay but now the mm -hmm. question is um, the, I've noticed that uh, you were um, very much involved in the, uh, you know, investment uh, mm -hmm. consulting, mm -hmm. right? Now, as being the parliament member, how do you view how good is the investment atmosphere mm -hmm. in Ukraine? Mm -hmm. Because, uh, you know, we talk about uh, a lot of issues like, um, and, you know, new new ways of, of uh, you know new energy and you know, all mm. those things, but we can't uh, develop them ourselves. Mm -hmm. So we need investments. Mm -hmm. But do the investors feel secure mm -hmm. coming in? Well, in this regard, I would like to talk not only about foreign investment, but uh, local as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so now I know that the, the industry, renewable energy industry, is growing. Mm -hmm. uh, so before before this law, we had uh, uh, less than one percent of, of renew, renewables in electricity system, mm -hmm. and now we have the uh, more than one and five percent. Mm -hmm. uh, so actually, uh, it's not it's very very small portion of renewables in our system, but still uh, the market shows uh, uh, positive tendency. Uh, second thing is why uh, why this market is uh, very very interesting at the moment. Uh, because, of course, uh, uh, investors should uh, uh, scare of war, financial instability, they are scared of uh, some political risk. Uh, 
uh, and uh, this is the obstacles. Mm. Uh, but a lot of investors are looking uh, into this market and, uh, for instance, for uh, U.S. investor, uh, U.S. government introduced uh, political risk uh, insurance. Mm. Uh, so uh, the government uh, cover up to $2 billion, uh, U.S. government cover up to $2 billion uh, uh, political insurance for any investor who are investing from uh, the U.S. And uh, such uh, similar system could be also introduced from the European Union, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, un still under discussion. But still, this is a mechanism how to uh, how to protect investment. Second thing in Ukraine, we have very cheap. Uh, working force, we have uh, uh, big potential and uh, yeah. cheap resources. Uh, so this is exactly the moment when uh, someone can, uh, can um, Do enter into yeah. this yeah. market. This is the best uh, time ever to invest in Ukraine. Uh, of course, it's risky, but at the other point, it's very profitable. And uh, uh, for instance, for biomass projects, uh, uh, Investment return period is four, five years with RR 20, 25 percent. So mm. it's very good investment. Okay. And by the way, uh, you know that in Paris a few, few days ago, we, mm -hmm. we had a very mm -hmm. large summit of climate change. Mm -hmm. And I want to know the participation of Ukraine in mm -hmm. this uh, summit and uh, you, what you think about this uh, process of mm -hmm. climate change or what is your opinion? Well, the things are very difficult now because of war, because of financial crisis, because of social crisis as well. Uh, this sphere is not uh, the first thing to, to resolve. And uh, uh, of course, uh, the second thing is uh, there is a lack of policy. And uh, um, I do, maybe because we have a lot of different problems, uh, but still Ukraine is participating in this conference and uh, the president visited this conference. Mm -hmm. He had speech uh, during this conference uh, and hopefully uh, Ministry of Ecology will develop this uh, direction and finally will uh, actually uh, manage uh, the ecology issue at high level. But at the moment I suppose um, actually it's, it wasn't priority. I totally understand. You have the, mm -hmm. the, the war in the mm -hmm. East uh, mm -hmm. and the uh, fight against corruption. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, you have a lot, mm -hmm. of, a lot mm -hmm. of problems. Yeah. But environment is also for next generation. Uh, yes. A huge, okay. huge subject. Uh, now, I want to um, mm -hmm. come back to a little uh, more uh, personal um, issues because you, it's true we've got some uh, interesting facts right now. But um, this is your first uh, time in the, such a position mm -hmm. being in the Verkhovna Rada, the mm -hmm. parliament of Ukraine. But I've noticed that you have 24 legislative initiatives and all of them are regarding, I mean, some of them are regarding tax, mm -hmm. some of them regarding customs, economic competition, budgets, energy, transparency of the anti-monopoly committees, mm -hmm. etc. Mm -hmm. That's quite a fruitful, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, because um, I know some uh, members of the parliament and they have hardly done anything. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> they, well, seriously. Mm -hmm. um, so if you could maybe point out what is your uh, mission mm -hmm. being in the parliament? Because, I mean, yeah, there's so many things you are involved in and I'm mm -hmm. like, you know, budgets, uh, customs, economic competition. Actually. To me, then when I saw that you were involved in the investment consulting, I thought, you know what, if I wanted to create a better investment uh, atmosphere, I would definitely make sure that there are some changes in taxes, customs, economic competition, budgets, <laughs> energy transparency of the anti-monopoly committees. I mean, you pretty much looks like you've got some system that you are uh, moving on. Well, thank you for such observation, actually. Uh, my main aim, of course, is reforming of uh, energy sphere, mm -hmm. uh, energy market, and uh, attract more investment into Ukrainian economy. Uh, so this is two things. Uh, so I am working in uh, energy committee, and uh, first of all, and secondly, I also create the group of MPs uh, who are taking care of investment climate. Mm -hmm. uh, we named as investment protection and investment uh, attraction group. Uh, so 
therefore, we are trying to introduce more competition, actually to make uh, the condition for investment more attractive here in Ukraine. Uh, so any initiatives uh, to support investments, we are always for. Uh, taking into account all these customs, tax, uh, so uh, we also do have very important initiatives with my colleagues from the committee uh, to increase uh, energy independence in Ukraine. And the one way we uh, choose is uh, to attract more investors mm -hmm. into gas extraction industry. So everyone claims that gas is so uh, expensive, people pay so high uh, bi uh, mm -hmm. bills uh, for, uh, for the uh, energy resources. But the local uh, local gas is more cheaper, first mm -hmm. of all. Uh, but we do not use our potential. Why? Because uh, of uh, not very efficient uh, fiscal regime for gas extraction companies. So I, with my colleagues, uh, we registered law to decrease royalties for private gas extraction companies. So now they paid 55% of just royalties plus uh, taxes. Mm -hmm. So it's more than 70% of tax burden uh, for those who invest uh, ten, tens of billions uh, into the gas extraction industry. So everyone stops their investment program here in Ukraine. They just extract gas, but they are very reluctant to sell this gas because of such high, uh, high uh, uh, royalty uh, mm -hmm. rate mm -hmm. and uh, at the moment we are negotiating with the government because government uh, they also take care about uh, profits about tax uh, collection mm -hmm. and we are arguing that uh, of course tax is important but uh, if we stop this industry will not receive taxes and gas uh, as well mm -hmm. so we we'll lose everything uh, so now for government actually shows uh, uh, their understanding and uh, I suppose by the end of this year we'll Will receive the decreased rate of royalties here in Ukraine and it leads to uh, there are a lot of uh, interest uh, uh, companies who want to invest in Ukraine gas uh, extraction industry because it's absolutely profitable mm -hmm. it's wise to invest in gas extraction here in Ukraine because we are also lack of these resources uh, so this is the way we are actually uh, this is the law we actually work uh, during the last year okay. uh, I know that uh, but I want to ask a question mm -hmm. Uh, why you went in politics? Why, 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 what is your motivation to go to politics? Hmm. Because I saw the results, yes, you are very dynamic, you, 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 you take a lot of very huge topics, but why one day you say, okay, I, I go to politics, I, I want to go to the, to the radar? Hmm. Well, actually it was uh, after the revolution of dignity. Uh, I. Uh, I used to work in business and uh, I lead uh, the investment uh, department of one uh, development company here in Ukraine. Then I lead uh, my own uh, consultancy company. So actually I worked as a business consultant and uh, everything was okay before the revolution of dignity. And then when we faced uh, such a dramatic change in our country, uh, I and my colleagues who are Western educated, uh, we uh, want to, to, to help Ukraine to recover from these uh, uh, shocks, uh, economic shocks, uh, and uh, uh, it was before the war started, mm -hmm. and we created such organization as professional government. Mm -hmm. And we offer uh, our consult uh, consultant mm -hmm. service for free to government, to parliament, to new elected parliament, uh, government mm -hmm. and uh, uh, to uh, parliament and it was my way to politics. So we and my colleagues, we were very active, uh, we actually trying to push our legislative initiatives, we are trying to push uh, some uh, good reforms mm -hmm. uh, and uh, finally uh, I and few of my colleagues were invited to the party list and more than 50 persons now uh, working in the uh, top level uh, in different state bodies, in national banks, in uh, president administration. So we are very well, well known organization who delivers professionals to the state authority. No. You know, that is very, very exciting because of, uh, as we, uh, since we started the UAT time mm -hmm. in July, mm -hmm. uh, we have had so many interesting guests here and uh, uh, the main theme for most of them, especially yeah. I'm talking about Ukrainians, uh, Ukrainian professionals who decided to sacrifice some of their personal uh, benefits, but to go into politics, but not as it usually happened to get rich, but really uh, joined the politics because they wanted to change something. 
they wanted to change something for better and they didn't want to you know let this uh, chance go away yeah. because otherwise we may not have another chance for another 10 20 years yes it was the case actually right. when we realized that we can even work here and change something or we we'll do not have a place here in this country. And, and mm -hmm. it's exciting to see yeah, parliament yeah. members that yeah. are professionals, mm -hmm. that more and more should yeah. be rather than just, you know, somebody from, first of all, or either has never worked, yeah. but he's rich as, uh, you know, richer than anybody in the world, in <laughs> Kyiv, in Ukraine, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, the, or it's better to have people from the business, from the private sector, to move in because and they know what those people need. That, that's right. That uh, at Trinity time we invited a lot of person like that. Uh, mm -hmm. I remember Denis, uh, yes, Denis, Denis Brodsky, yes. uh, Vasil, they they come from uh, from abroad, from yes. London, mm -hmm. and they they, they 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 came here and to to help Ukraine, and that's amazing, you know, mm -hmm. because they, they they really had a good business <laughs> in London, and they they, they they came here and not for business but to help yes, the country. So Vasil Beroshnachenko, he is also the member of the board of this organization. Okay. So actually we are just I, I was with him this morning at the... <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, it's been uh, fun. Thank you very much for uh, giving us uh, insightful information and about your plans. Uh, we are here to help as well. So if there is anything as far as uh, communication platform in English, uh, feel free to let us know we we can love to you can come help. back yeah. okay <laughs> right. thank you so much <laughs> it was united country uat time by first ukraine our guest was natalia katsar buchkovska a member of ukrainian parliament head of the subcommittee on sustainable development strategy and investments of committee on energy nuclear policy and security Olivier Vedrin and Sergei Verichansky were working for you in the studio. Stay with us and we will show to you the real Ukraine. Thank you for being with us. Have a good day and see you soon.